I want to welcome everybody to both sides of the conversation. I'm Rico Hamilton, and this is Hitting Gems in the Black Community, Women Edition. And I want to thank everybody for watching out there um, as we honor our amazing honorees, amazing women that's doing amazing work in San Francisco Bay Area, Oakland. Um, uh, Jada? Yeah, hi, my name is Jada. Um, I'm a USF student currently studying physics, um, community organizer, tutor, um, yeah. And I'm John Henry, the co-founder of Both Sides of the Conversation and just delighted today to have these sisters on our part one of the Queens of our community. So Jada, if you can uh, read the bio of um, Kashla. 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 All right. Yeah, so jumping right into it, uh, the first gem that we are going to be recognizing today is Kashla. Is it Kashla? Kashla mm -hmm. Crockett. Kashla Crockett. She is an Oakland native. She completed her primary education um, through the Oakland School District before continuing on to Boise State University on a track and field scholarship. And she got her bachelor's of science in phys um, physics and psychology. Um, she also was previously the director seat of both the intensive treatment foster care and multidimensional treatment foster care programs that provide trauma informed healing mental care and another and a multitude of services within eight local counties. Yes, bring Kosh up while she's coming up. I just want to let everybody know that's a good sister. I've been knowing her. She also mentors, give me a lot of information. She's part of the community. She shows up. Uh, she came to a number of homeless fees to support the community. So just honored to be a part of her circle. And now the world get to get a part of her circle. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Um, Salute to the work that you both are doing, John and Rico, and thank you, Jada. Uh, yeah, so I started out as a case manager and moved my way up to director of intensive treatment, multidimensional treatment, foster care, serving eight counties and youth and families in Oakland in the Bay Area. Um, I then went and pursued my master's and got my master's in counseling, marriage and family therapy. And from there began a career as a forensic interviewer as well as um, a community counselor where I kind of finished up my career in San Mateo County as a um, counselor in a dual diagnosed mental health program. I then began teaching and I've you know started teaching in the criminal and justice system. I teach and taught in Bayview and throughout um, San Francisco jails. And so I then branched out and created a company called Concierge. And Concierge is kind of more of like my passion project. I get to support community-based organizations and small businesses in Oakland to reach their target audience through strategic marketing. I also support them via events. And one of my most special events is the Pop-Up Resource Village, which is, com is a community commerce organization and we support local business and merchants to come out and sell their goods and services in the community that they live in. So the money generates within the community. Um, we support youth chefs and youth vendors as well. And we have six different villages ranging from health and wellness to food, regenerative retail. Um, we support art and culture, so everything from DJs to acupuncture and cupping, all services from people of service, people of service and of color, providing those services to communities of color where they live and at a rate that people can afford, more importantly. Um, and so outside of the pop-up resource village, I'm also a part of the East Oakland's Black Cultural Zone. We do fittings on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right there on 73rd and Foothill. Um, until 7 p.m. every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We serve about 1,500 meals each of those days. And tomorrow, I'll be partnering with Dahlia La Pantera, who's a woman boxer, and she and I will do, be doing community healing circles for the youth. So that will be tomorrow from 11 to 3 at San Antonio Park. 
Um, again, here in East Oakland, I'm a dubs baby. So we, we supporting the youth and the dubs and um, it's specifically for black and brown youth. Um, we're gonna hold that space for them and protect that space and offer some kind of community healing um, with social distancing in mind and offering those healing circles. So we'll have the African drummers and the Aztec drummers opening up our circles and they'll be able to do some physical exertion workshops through the boxing. We're gonna set up a gym out in the park and then we'll finish up with some community healing facilitators and um, have lunch all through volunteer efforts. So if you wanna follow me, you can do that at social media concierge that's k-a-c-i-e-r-g-e on instagram facebook and twitter my email my information is in the chat if anybody wants to reach out thank you cool can you can you also before you go out and hear you mention about the, the the gun club that you're a part of for the women and men gun club can you please uh let people know about that because that's something Definitely. big for the bay area yeah so big up to oakland um the mow gun club it's also on Facebook and Instagram. You can follow us there for further information. That's M as in Martin, O as in Oscar, W as in Wilma, Gun Club. And it's the only NAGA, National African American Gun Association approved club on the West Coast. We have our meetings when we are available to meet in West Oakland. Outside of that, we do do a monthly informational and then we do range days. And so what you get when you're a part of NAGA is discounts on certain materials, um, structured range days, and then I organize range days and in community circles for the women who are in the NAGA association and in MOW gun club. So yeah, please follow those pages on uh, Instagram and Facebook as well. Thanks, John. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, just continue the amazing work that you do, that you're doing. You're definitely uh, one of them gems of our community that continue to enlighten our young people and even older people. Um, I just wanted to know what keep you inspired. I mean, I know, you know, there's a lot that happens in our community that sometimes I know myself, I'm getting grazed. I go, I, I get kind of depressed about the state that our people are in when we're trying our best to educate them. What keep you motivated? What keep your engine going to, to, to keep the work going? So um, I don't know. I don't know if it's my birth order or not, but I'm the youngest of five siblings. And so you get used to scrapping. You get used to going for what you know and making the best out of any situation. I am just a service-oriented person. I give thanks to God for that. I'm a person of <clears throat> service from an attitude of gratitude. I look for the silver lining in every situation. And from my own circumstances, I just know that anything is possible. Um, I paid my own way through undergraduate school and graduate school, uh, bought my own first car. Like people look at me now as, you know, I even coordinated for the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, Oakland Bay Area chapter and did their Positive Steps Youth Group. Shout out to them. Um, but people look at me now and say, oh, my God, like you doing so well and you you help so many people and you not y'all have no idea, like for real. So I think my own story inspires me because if we don't share those stories, people don't really have an idea that anything is possible coming from a family who are survivors of domestic violence, coming from the capital murder dubs, like coming from. You know, I had to cross yellow tape to catch the bus to go to school. So I understand the struggle. I understand the temptations of wanting to get involved in um, the drug industry. Now, thank God, it's not criminalized anymore, at least marijuana. And we can do that, um, you know, professionally. And so I support people who feel like that there is no hope because at some point people discounted me and... I had to show them something different. I had to be that proof. And so I just continue to move from that aspect and that angle of being that proof. And I know that I'm not looking to any outside source to come to my aid or come to my rescue, especially of those of my youth. That's my job. That's my responsibility. And I take that on wholeheartedly and passionately. And so if I'm not leading that charge, I don't get to complain. So I can't help but to be out on the front line doing what I do and making those connections. I'm born and raised in the Bay Area and there's no place like it. I've been all over the world. 
and there is no place like it. And so for us to be able to have the opportunities that I've had and to not give back, criminal. I, I couldn't do it. So yeah, I just have to spread that that hope and that fire, especially amongst youth people in our community. So yeah, I'm not even gonna ask the question because you covered everything off of that, but I do want to say thank you. Um, I'm, I'm just blessed to be a part of your circle because you keep me energized. And I know, and now as these people get to see you, how important you are to the community. You always pumping our people, uh, supporting each other. You didn't even talk about your juices and health. You big into the black health. So it, it's a yeah. lot of stuff that you're doing that people, once they get to tap in and reach out, what you're doing is very powerful. And again, I'm just blessed to be a part of you, know you. And I'm just glad you was able to get on our platform, share this information. And um, just to be one of our part one hidden gems of the community, we thank you for your service and uh, we love you, sis. And we definitely gonna have yes. to collaborate. We definitely got to collaborate on something. I don't know what, but we need to collaborate on something. <laughs> it's coming, it's coming and, and, it's and this, this, wait, wait, wait. And this Sunday, you got to come talk about this because this Sunday topic at two o'clock is about violence, domestic violence. So you, definitely, I want you to uh, make sure if you have time to get in there. Jada, you got something you want to ask? Um, yeah, I just I just wanted to ask because I know even myself, I'm in college now. Did you always, how did you kind of mold your career to figure out how exactly you wanted to give back? You know what, Jada, that's a good question. I was actually supposed to be an engineer. I was a part of the national. Oh, wow. And when I got to college, I'm just always open minded. I feel like if there's something that speaks to you that you should investigate it, it's important to know exactly what you don't like as much as it is, is what you do like. And so when I was taking my classes, I just kept following what spoke to me. And what spoke to me was always this um, thing about being of service and about the how people really worked. And so for me, engineering was more of like the mechanical aspects of it. Psychology was more of the human aspect of it, how things come together and how things work and how people work. And so I feel like I'm just a people engineer, if you will, I to help that. people kind of like, my friend calls me the mycenial networker, just to help the fusion of people to build. And that's really important in our community is what you all are doing and the platform that you're providing is to have each of us build and to, you know, explore and expand on that information that we have so we can see how we can all fit together. And the sooner we figure that out, the better we'll be, you know? So I just think that even you in physics, if there's something that particularly calls to you, then follow that. You don't necessarily have to buy into what's already been chartered. You mm -hmm. may be forging a new path. And so just follow that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. See, I didn't even know my mechanical background. That's what the connection <laughs> is. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> hey, well, thank you again, Kosh Love Band. We appreciate you. We love you. And uh, thank you for being a, a freedom fighter and a hidden gem in our community, leading our people. Because, you know, we always say you can't lead the people if you don't feed the people. And it's not just food and money. It's information and love. And we thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, John, she's a, she was she's amazing, man. I did I did oh, my little man. I did my little research and it, man, like she like oh my goodness, like oh yeah, we gotta amazing. link up. Our, she already talked about some stuff. We gonna link up, man. We definitely link yeah. it up. So all let's, the amazing stuff that she got going on was was real big, real big, real. So big. who's up next? Who we pulling up next here? So next we got somebody that's super amazing, doing some amazing work in uh, San Francisco uh, throughout the Bay Area. Uh, this lady I've been knowing for a while. I've seen all the amazing work that she do, especially when it comes to crises and how uh, in homicides in San Francisco. She worked for DPH. She's a part of the crisis team. She supports uh, all of the mothers. Anytime something happens, she's the one supporting every last mother. She's supporting the fathers. She's making uh, funeral arrangements. She's doing repasses. Like she's the one who's behind the scenes that's uh, making everything happen for families and a lot and I, and. I know that, you know, she deserves to be highlighted for all the amazing work that she has going on and that she do. So let me bring her on up. Her name is Lynn Westry out of the Bayview. 
Sister Lynn. She got to turn her mic on. Okay. Can you Sister hear me Lynn. now? I can Where's hear the you. Camera you on? We don't you turn your see camera you. On. Come on. You get highlighted. Okay, you guys. I'm look. This thing's <laughs> supposed to be on here. <laughs> Rico, I think you could ask. Um, you could Rico, ask. You could, the you could turn her camera. On. Yeah, you could turn her camera on. I think it should be the camera button next to the the uh, the mute button, Lynn. There we go. Hey. There we go. <laughs> now you got to turn your mic on. Now you got to turn your mic on. Turn her mic on, Rico. Oh Lord. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, can you hear me? We can yes. hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you. So we definitely oh. want you to come on today because we definitely <laughs> want to highlight all the amazing work that you got going on, all the amazing work that you have been doing for all the years you've been doing the work. Um, we are honored to have someone like you in our community to gather people together to be able to support the community. All the mothers that I've seen you work with and support and have their back and ride with them, even when they didn't even know that you was riding with them and had they back, you know, um, in a time of emotion, uh, they just saying whatever. And I've seen you keep your cool and say, you know what, I'm here for you anyway, sister, I got your back. So, you know, we wanted to highlight you because a lot of times people don't know who's who in the, who's doing what. So we know that you are a gym, like you are one of the gyms of the community that's doing amazing work. And we wanted to highlight you on our platform to talk about all the amazing stuff that you got going on and all the stuff that you do uh with uh the city well just to start off i feel like god really truly has a sense of humor because to do this work is something that i truly did not sign up for i didn't ask for didn't want this did not go to school for this i had a completely different agenda um back in 89 i guess my story kind of started and i hate to sound like this like a historian or something but it actually started when my very best friend was killed on third in newcomb in front of the opera house mm. and that was like the most devastating thing i thought my life was over with at that point and so um you know i bounced back eventually from that but then back september the 7th 1998 my oldest daughter was killed, her and her friend was killed in a car accident. I decided at that point, I was not going to talk. I wasn't going to speak. Just, just stop. I don't even want to live no more. Um, but God, again, had a different plan for me. And I began to look at and see, you know what? I have another child that I have to live for. And then it was kind of ironic because after that, a lot of people that I knew kids were getting killed and it was just seemed like nothing was taking place. I'm like, come on, I'm working for this department. This is a public health issue. What's going on? And I'm in pain. My community is in pain. What's happening? So at that point, I just started going and speaking to any and everybody that probably just would be willing to listen to whatever I had to say. And again, I had no idea what I was doing. Literally, I was just walking in the blind. And one person said, asked me, do you know my homegirl, Barbara Garcia? I'm like, no. She was like, okay, um, you need to talk, speak with Barbara Garcia. And I'm at this point, I'm speaking, I don't care. Okay, I'll speak to your homegirl, still not knowing who Barbara Garcia really was, right? Uh, and the rest is history after that. Next thing I know, it was a whole re crisis response to the violence and not just um, when a homicide happened, but I need to kind of back up just a little bit that I went through a real struggle. And sometimes throughout the years, I still struggle with it a little bit because my daughter, at 18 wasn't killed by a gun. She was killed from someone that was drinking, smoking uh, and everything else, her and her friend. And the third girl um, sustained severe head injury. But my community and my people made my pain feel less than because it wasn't a gun that killed her. So again, when people used to ask me, oh, so how did she get killed? I would always kind of like stop and somewhere in the back of my mind I almost wanted to make up some, you know, other than the fact that she was killed in a car accident. Although that car was a gun to me. 
and my life have forever changed. And so when I go out and I work with these families and I'm there with those mothers, I'm literally crying because it's not just a job to me because I understand firsthand that pain. And I understand that their lives will never ever be the same again. When I think about this is 2020 and this happened for me in 1998 and I have to say also my other half his son at 15 was killed in front of um, Philip Burton High School I believe it was 2007 so again I just kind of me personally have been traumatized over traumatized and in fact someone I recently that I called my son he was killed in Sacramento although he's from here, he was killed in Sacramento back um, February 28th, which I'm still dealing with that um, emotion and just really trying to get through that. But at the same time, still work with these families, still um, hold these families up. And so when you see me and you see me in the platform like we were in on Friday and you hear the anger and you hear the pain, because again, my whole point is don't wait till it comes to your front door. And you think because you've experienced community violence, even your friend being getting killed, let me tell you, baby, it's a whole different story when your child gets killed. And I don't think people fully understand there's a severe difference. You are never the same, whether it's good, bad, indifferent, your life has forever been altered. So I'm always thinking, and again, I'm like, God, okay, I don't know how long you want me on this journey. I'm getting a little old for this, okay? I'm tired now. But it just seems like the more I'm feeling like that, he gives me a different burst of energy and knowing because again, um, when we had um, the platform on Friday, I just really wanted to push and I'm still pushing accountability and sustainability because not only do I want our young men and women to live, I want us to be accountable for how we're living. And I think that we have to, in order for that to happen, we have to start taking accountability for the things that we do um, as parents, as community folk. And again, if I'm going to hold the mayor per se or the chief of police or whoever if i'm gonna hold them accountable then i have to be accountable as well i have to be although my daughter is in her late 30s i'm a grandmother i have to be accountable for what i'm doing and what i'm and how i'm moving and grooving even where she's concerned if i'm not if if she can do or say anything with me standing there how can i tell someone else that's not cool so again, I think um, we really have to take this thing back and be accountable. And that's why, again, I'm willing and open to stepping up, working with Rico, working with John, working with others that I know that's doing things in the community, positive things to help make a difference. Again, folks keep asking, um, so what is the follow-up in terms of Friday? Well, the follow-up is to connect with those things, connect with... Um, um, Black Wall Street, connect with uh, SF Black Wall Street, I'm sorry, connect with um, the groups that Rico and John is having, if that's where you fit. If you want to look into housing and how to purchase homes, change your credit, you know, bring this thing up, looking into stock, maybe SF Black Wall Street. Um, if you're interested, connect with um, uh, wealth and disparities in the Black community. Get in the conversations with um, the Human Rights Commission. We got to set and align ourselves in a place that we can help make a difference. And But first, again, we have to be willing to step up, be accounted for, and quit making excuses. And that's the one thing that I see so often in our community. I am so tired of people making excuses. And trust me, I get the crack era. I get this. I get, I get all of that. We're in 2020 now. When you know better, you do better. And we should be in a place that we know better. We know what happened in the 80s. Some of you guys were just getting in the world in the 80s, you know, so, <laughs> I, you know, we can't, that, that's some bull, that's some bull, and everybody wasn't on crack, you right. know, I wasn't on crack, I made mistakes raising my child, my kids, but, and I was a young mother, but what I tell my daughter all the time, guess what, whatever mistakes I made, I apologize, but we're moving on. 
okay? You're not going to hold me hostage to whatever those mistakes was. How can we move on to make this thing better? Right. Well, I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Liz. I'm just, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I just wanted, I wanted to jump in and just say thank you. Um, you know, me born and raised in Baby Hunters Point, I knew who you was um, <laughs> by face. I knew your kids on Bertha Lane. You know, me growing up in Dub Rock. So I, I remember, I remember you seeing your face, and when me and Rico was talking about putting a march together, and he kept saying Lynn, I just couldn't put the name to the face. But when I see you, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so now it just, it just came all circle full around, man. And I just want to thank you because you was a big part of the success of, of, of the of the march, and um, just all of the OGs and people just showing you so much love, Herm, SJ. You know, D.O. and them, a lot of people, man, just love and respect what you're doing and your fire, your energy. Um, it just pushed me to do more. You know, me and Rico, we doing our stuff, but just seeing you up there fight, being a freedom fighter, it just made me want to do more. So I thank I'm you. happy to hear that, and I appreciate that. And it's crazy because I I kind of like, I'll, sometimes I don't connect the name to until I see the person face. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm seeing him around. Yeah, definitely I've seen him around. <laughs> So I'm glad, but you know, if they would have told you, you know, the five feet freckle face, you know, you probably would have knew who I was. <laughs> right, right. Never stopped, you know, that little one that never stopped going, that would be Right, me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but again, Jayden. I think that we need to really just figure out how we can um, really um, keep this thing going. And another thing, I, I'm telling you guys, God has a sense of humor because i um, two, three this morning, I couldn't even sleep because he'd like just filling my mind with so much of what we need to do. And again, to really thinking about how we can really begin to help make our, um, you know, our neighborhood different and better for us. And one of the things that I started thinking, um, I want to do a community um, cleanup. I want to take um, different streets and neighborhoods one by one. And we do a community cleanup, um, of course, social distancing with that, but and also um, letting our people know, uh, giving the message out about COVID and information around COVID, but um, taking it set by set and cleaning up our streets. Because again, I feel like if your environment is clean and it's right and it's nice, then you have a different attitude. And right. we have to start showing our young people, you know, to take pride in where you live. If, don't just eat something and throw that paper on the ground, pick it up, throw it in the garbage. Mm -hmm. So again, we got to begin to start teaching. And I told you guys on Friday, I'm kind of like in this Black Panther type mode right now. And again, I'm into right now really taking our streets back, like us standing strong. And I'm firm with this Black thing in all Black, whether or not we marching down third. And it's not, we're not accepting the fact that people are literally standing on third and Palu from sun up to sundown. I'm right. all for doing a cultural thing. I love seeing my people sit playing dominoes, playing checkers or whatever you're doing, but let's do it and make it a cultural thing. Let's build our culture, not just standing there wasting away and we're accepting and we're stepping over it and our streets are stinking. Our, we can't even hardly walk down our streets. No. So again, those are the things that I'm thinking about and how we can just really come together and hey, let's make some chess moves. We've been playing checkers way too long. Right. So just so you know, you mentioned a couple of things that we touched on. Uh, we working with your uh, daughter, Tiffany, in the, uh, San Francisco Black Wall Street. So I'm actually putting together right now, me and her talk today, we're going to put a whole week of financial literacy, a program cool. that we're going to use on this platform. We're going to bring in some people to talk about stocks, investments, and things of that nature. So it's coming. Uh, me and Rico, we, we got a lot of stuff that's coming in the community, <laughs> but we're really trying to right now with this, both sides of the conversation, bring in the community together, men and women. Um, mm -hmm. There's so much separatism going on in our community, the man groups, the women groups, and it's okay to have an individual group, but now we're trying to use this to pull the men and women together in the community and make change. So we, we own it. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, I need you guys to be on it because, like I said, I'm getting tired. <laughs> but I still got, but but I still got a couple of good ones. Look, I can look right. Up, you know? <laughs> right. And let me tell you, and in this, so that I can maintain for a few more. Let me tell you, I'm also into like before we start anything, you know, to do some workouts because guess what? If we're not healthy and in shape, we can't do can't this. Can't do fight. nothing. That's right. That's right. Got that right.
and I'm out of shape, so I need to get in shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jada, did Jada, you have did any you questions? Have yeah, I do. I just, I just want to say, you know, thank you for sharing. And um, I've, I've, I've seen you in the baby before when I was growing up, when I was little, I do remember your face. <laughs> um, but um, uh, the question that I had was because like you mentioned several times, you know, you yourself, you're getting tired. And how do you like, what, what would you have to say to youth that are trying to figure out how do I get involved? I know you mentioned SF Black Wall Street doing amazing work. Um, but, but what, what would you have to say to the youth? Uh well, if, if you're talking about a young person, um, I'm not sure where you're at. My granddaughter, per, per se, is a college student. Um, mm -hmm. She's in her third year of college. And her involvement that I always tell her is to come back and to give back. You know, whenever opportunity is there, I want you to walk through that door and utilize those opportunities and bring back. You're very involved in um, the Black Coalition on your college campus, bring that back to your community. Uh, let others know how they can get involved. Uh, I have, she at different points, she also do tour, tutorial for younger um, folk. I mean, it's, it's somewhere for everyone and it's just mm -hmm. really finding your niche and where you could be most profound. But the one thing I absolutely stand for is coming back and giving to your community. Mm -hmm. That is, that's super important. Well, I definitely want to thank mm -hmm. you for everything that you do, Lynn. Continue the amazing work. You're definitely one of the gems that is in our community. And as much as I possibly can, John, uh, and the men that I'm around, we're going to continue to highlight you and the women that's doing the work. We definitely want to get uh, a Wealth and Disparities on next. You know, our sister Felicia Absolutely. Jones, who, we definitely going to get her on the next episode. I got to hit her up mm -hmm. and let her know we need her to come on because y'all are the gems, y'all would hold a lot of the glue together. Um, and a lot of times folks don't highlight you, you know, the, they, they create their own narrative of who's doing the work. When I'm on the ground, I'm in the trenches and I know who really doing the work and every chance I get, I'm gonna talk about those people who doing the work, you know what I yep. mean? So thank you so much, Lynn, for all the work. You thank do. you, Lynn, we love you. Thank well, you. thank you and I love you guys. And again, um, as I told you, Rico, it's all about us and me as a woman teaching other younger women that you know what we as women we need to stand with our men we need to uplift you we may, we need to help make you look good make you think you right. doing no we that's doing right. <laughs> that's a little gym for you Jay, that you right. know. yes <laughs> That's good, though. Yeah, That's but good. We gotta stand, but we got to stand there. We got to learn to really lift because guess what? We have a lot of good, strong Black men in our within our community. And I really want to help stand with and show I'm not afraid to step aside for, for a brother. Right. right. But I will stand. And I want you to know that I'm standing with you. As a black woman, I stand with my black men and I want to lift you up and I want you to know that I love you coming from a black woman. I love my black men and whatever I can do to help lift, uplift my black men and support, I'm here to do that. So again, I thank you guys, whatever you need from me, I'm here. For sure. Got you. Thank Got you. you. Love you. Thank All you. All right. Love you guys. All right. All right. Thank you. Oh, All right. Man. So hey, we got Lynn is amazing, next. bro, bro. Man, she's amazing. Oh, come on, she's man. Like a, That's a real... She's like a little warrior, man. She be putting in <laughs> all the work, bro. Come on, man. So now you we got to bring up Tashel. Tashel, we, we got to bring Tashel up, man. Uh, good people, man. Jada, go ahead and bring her in with the bio. All right. Um, so Tashel was born and raised here in the city um, over in Bayview Hunter, uh, Hunters Point. She's a, she was a first generation college student. She obtained multiple degrees at Laney College, a third generation black educator. Um, she went to SF State and right now she's the associate director of the 100% college prep program here in the city. Yes, we got to thank Tashel, man. <laughs> I, I just, I have to say before you go, I'm so proud of you, sister. And um, you know, you we definitely had to highlight you as one of the gems in our community, the great work you do. 
you know, I've been knowing you since a, a, a turtle in the pond, man. We go back like <laughs> we go way back, and uh, it's just great to for both of us to come at this point of our lives to be doing the same great work, trying to uh, impact our community and the youth. And um, I just want to say thank you before you even start, and um, definitely one of the gems of our community. You're welcome. Thank you, John. So, um, oh, it was no question. So, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tichelle. I was born and raised in Bayview Hunters Point. If my family heard me say that, they'll say, no, you were raised in Silver Terrace. Well, <laughs> as, as I developed into the Black person you see, I spent the majority of my life at the library on third and revere and the librarian in there molded me to who i am today um her name was linda burton brooks and she put books in my hand that my teachers did not books that were written by black people for black people so one of my favorite books that i read um, with a group of students who went to woodrow wilson while i'm in james lick middle school was malcolm x and I grew up around people like John Henry's father and uncles, like I know what a black man looks like, sound like, acts like, but Malcolm was different. And then all of a sudden in my neighborhood, um, it was, you're a Tupac fan or a Biggie fan, you go to the Muslim school, you go to private school, you go to public school. And so I had to make a choice. And the choice that I made was education because, um, I just, I, I couldn't do YGC, I couldn't do the streets. It just it wasn't for me, uh, firecracker scared me. So <laughs> I went off to college um, when I graduated from high school. And from there, I just obtained everything that was free for me. Um, I learned that reading is a privilege. I use it every day. Um, when I started earning these degrees, it said you have the rights and privilege. So I wanted as many rights and privileges as I could. Um, I graduated from Laney College. That put Huey Newton and Bobby Seals in my veins, but I studied a lot of Elaine Brown work, um, Catherine Cleaver. I studied Panthers who left America and went to Africa. So one of my goals in life was to save $100,000 and go to Africa. I didn't get to the $100,000, but I was the first from my community to go to Africa. So. Um, John actually gave me a hundred dollars to go. So <laughs> um, from that trip, I just came back to America with the intent of all black kids. Any kid I taught, let's just put it that way, they had to learn more. And um, because I am a third generation teacher, I was put at hard to staff school. So I went from Burton to Independence to Galileo. And Galileo, I was under the leadership of the greatest principal ever, um, Marcus Blackshear. He passed away and he passed me his torch. And so inside my body, I have ideas that I don't even know where they came from. Like, I'm not, I'm not a, I follow rules. Can I just say that I follow rules? But sometimes rules are meant to be broken, especially when you write a 150 page paper on integration or segregating black kids. Um, inclusion methods for special ed. I'm very passionate when it comes to miseducation of black, brown, yellow, green, gay, bot, straight, white children. Um, I was the first black ethnic studies teacher in middle school. And I stand on that platform because ethnic studies was something that they were like, mm-mm, mm-mm. I'm like, what do you mean, mm-mm? Everything comes from Africa, everything. Nick Cannon was just fired because he said the truth, which I'm like, what's his Twitter? Let me talk to him for a second. I have friends who literally embrace being black and now 2020 i'm seeing that black is more than a color it's a state of mind it's a capital b and i put my all into every single student that i teach reach and they give it right back to me so there will be no miss to shell if it was not students in public private charter and homeschool um, my favorite students come from john's uh, little side hustle um ygc you know, they come to me with this attitude, like, I don't care about what you say. I'm like, okay, well, you know, you know, John, you know, Corey, you know, Jack, they're my bodyguards. So while you in here at 100% college prep, my job is to make sure you get ready for college. And, you know, they had this attitude of, sounds good. Well, at the end of the day, the end of the year, 
they're going off to college with full paid tuition, scholarships, a sense of being and knowing who they are. If you are from Hunters Point, you strong. You like the X-Men. There's something in that soil, in that air, and in power lines that do something to us. It make us strong. Strong. What about Fillmo? Huh? What about Fillmo? <laughs> oh, that's don't, leave, don't leave us out. <laughs> that's black heritage all day. My students from Fillmore, I expect excellence. Your pants are up. Your face is greased. You know black culture. You have a grandmother and an uncle. <laughs> so... It's just, it's just dynamics that every child in San Francisco who is Black that I had the opportunity and privilege to work with, I've seen them grow. I planted seeds. Um, they go to college. They come back to the community. They work for uh, YCD, which is Young Community Developers. Like That's the biggest employment for Black people in the community. Um, that's a hidden gem. So what we did at 100%, we got married to YCD. So we brought in the educational component. So now not only do you have an education and you know how to fill out an application and you're in college, you have a job. If you go off to college and you come back for the summer, you have a job. You have mentors, um, the ED, uh, DJ. I mean, I'm older than him, believe it or not, but he is a great inspiration to me. He said one word, his first week of work. Why not? Why can't we do that? And from that, why not, I literally took my mentor, <laughs> Harriet Tubman, I took her mentality of leading children into the promised land, which is a full ride to any college. All you have to do is apply yourself, have a high GPA, take the SAT, community service, write a killer personal statement and apply for scholarships. Every two hours, every day, you should be applying. And that's what the class of 2020 did. And they end up getting $550,000 in scholarships. So I can sleep good at night knowing my children are not gonna have to worry about pinching together pennies to pay their student loans back. Cause that's the one thing I hate about me going to college. I have a loan. Why do I have a loan? I thought in this country, all people should go to college for free. Cause when I learned that other countries is free and medical is free, I'm like, hmm. And that's, as the teacher, I travel abroad. I go to Cuba, I've been to the Bahamas, Africa. Next is Canada. As soon as my passport come back, I'm out of here. I like to travel to see how education is around the world and bring it home. When I was in Texas and um, Washington, DC, I learned that high school students are graduating with college credits. So I came back here and partnered with San Francisco State University we give out college credits through our Step to College program at 100% College Prep and at Galileo. There's no other schools doing that. And so I asked myself, do you really care about higher education? Because if you did, you should be duplicating what we are doing. And so that's the platform, you know, when John asked me to come on, the gym, the tools that I want to give to the children are, you can go to college right now. If you are an 11th grader or a 12th grader, you could come to college right now, online, of course, but you can go to college and you can do this. If anybody tell you that you can't, they're haters. Haters is a real word and you don't need those type of people. Um, I also take students on historical black college tours. This year would have been the best tour ever. However, COVID-19 hit, um, taking them on these tours changes their lives. I've taken children from Double Rock, West Point. I'm using original names for all the new people coming into San Francisco. I've taken them from Phil Mo, <laughs> and they've raised money on their own. GoFundMes, barbecues, picking up cans, because when a child hustles for their education, they appreciate it more. And we go from the deep down South, Mississippi, New Orleans, all the way up to Morgan State. And that's the highlight of the program. You will be 100% college prepared when it's time for you to walk on campus. Only thing now, you got to take the COVID-19 test. So close your eyes. Let's go. You got all the money to go. Let them stick you in the nose. It's time to go. So. Right. Well, I it. just, I, I want to say thank you. And I also want you to put the, the program that you run in the, in the chat. 
Um, I, I want to say, you know me, I always support everything. We could go all the way back to Galileo, Galileo High School, supporting the kids. And you know, anything I always could do for, for you, for your staff, you know, I'm always there financially or whatever support you need. And I also want to thank you because the kids that we're dealing with at Juvenile Hall, when they get out and they come to your program and some of these kids, they're not even interested in, 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 in education. And then they come to your program and they like, oh, to shell. You know, and there's a lot of nice men. There's a lot of nice men. You on the phone arguing, crying, yelling about these kids. It's kids. I'm saying they ain't ready to go, and you like, nah, they ready to go. And uh, we always work it out. And um, that's why I wanted to make sure that you was a part of this special one, because the first hidden gem is about you know the people that's doing just amazing top top of the mark things. And it's a lot more coming, but I had to get you on to show. And I just want to thank you again for educating our young black kids, teach them the, the shortcuts and the path to get through college and uh, making them feel that uh, education is important, it's acceptable to be black and be educated. So I, I just want to thank you. Well, thank you too, John, because your talks really help because I'm a female <laughs> and I can't talk to a male like you do. So thank you and everybody who works in juvenile after hours because I, I pray hard. I tell them I can teach you here, but if you get into that pipeline to prison, my cousin got to help you. Corey got to help you. And I will call and be crying and boohooing because I love my children. I don't have any, so those are my babies. So thank you, because it takes it takes a lot. It takes your soul when you're trying to really reach a child. Jada, you got a question, Jada? Or Rico, go ahead, Rico. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say thank you for all the amazing work that you're doing. Uh, thank you for being that hidden gem in the community um, and all the stuff that you got going on. And you know, I heard you say ethics studies and and all this and, and all this because that, like that's the stuff that we got to teach our children in order to empower them to be great and recognize their that they really come from rich heritage that they're kings, queens, princesses, and princes um, of the land. And you know, a lot of people don't talk about that. A lot of people don't talk about teaching African American and Black students about who they really are. And for you to be doing that, that's a gem within itself. Outside of all the amazing things that you mentioned. Keep up the amazing work. Any opportunity that me and John got, we definitely gonna highlight you. He talk about you all the time and it's just finally, I'm happy to be able to put a face with a name. And I'm like, John, I don't know who the hell you talking about. <laughs> Not like that, but, but I didn't know. And he would always say, well, she got this going on, got that going on, got this going on. But that's the bit that's the best thing because John is from one part of the city. I'm from another part, but we're trying to bridge the gap and create black San Francisco. Um, yeah, we got our different areas where we where we grew up at, but with three percent of the population, we got to say black San Francisco and represent it real, real hard. So me and John, we're trying to collaborate that, bring men and black men and black women together to represent that. And we want to highlight you as much as possible. We want you to highlight your programs. So youth all across uh, the Bay Area can see all the amazing stuff we got going on in San Francisco so they can send their babies here to continue on the amazing work we got going. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to add on to, um, I just I just love both you and Corey. I was in uh, one of the YCD programs when I was, um, uh, when was it? Summer school, I was spending summer school at Mission. And I remember the program had ended and I told you, I reached out to you. I said, hey, I'm not sure what my schedule is going to be like. And you said, okay, well, you got to come to my office. And I remember, I think I told you, uh, that's too far for me. And you said the same thing that you just said. Well, you got to hustle for it. And I was like, okay, I'm on the way. <laughs> but, but I love... Um, hearing and seeing all the work that you and Corey do is really so important and being a part of YCD even that was amazing yes it's I went from working in corporate America to a CBO and I wouldn't change it um, being a black educator it's hard h-a-r-d but being a director congratulations Jada I heard your promotion director um <laughs> It's more my alley. I love lesson planning, but directing people the right way, that's what Harriet did. And I think I've encompassed her spirit. Out of all the African-American women, her and Malcolm X's wife, it, they do something to my soul. They're leaders. Her radio show, like I'm like, oh my God, why didn't I know about this in college? Because words that come from people who are doing good things, they stick to your bones. And so hopefully people who are watching this will, you know, take the three ladies who spoke, you know, violent prevention, 
health, and then education. With those three things, you real black. <laughs> All right, and I just want to say it's funny you mentioned uh, Harriet Tubman because every time the kids got a juvenile and we tell them we send you to the college prep, I always say, you're going to see Harriet Tubman. <laughs> she go free you. She go free you. So it's funny you say that. That's our little, that's me and Jack inside joke. We like, we're going to get y'all right on the freedom train and then we're going to drop y'all off at Harry Tubby. We're going to take care of y'all. <laughs> you right. Because you the Frederick Douglass right there, John. You the Frederick Douglass. I'm going to get you too, Rico. I'm going to find your name. Right. You might be Booker P. Washington. <laughs> All right. Well, thank y'all so right. much. Uh, thank you too, Anytime Chichelle. You need we're gonna, me, let me know. All right, for sure. We're going to look out for you. All right. All right, everybody. We wind it down to our last hidden gym. I know it's been long today. She's been holding on out there. Bring her up, Rico. What's up, Tanae? Turn your camera, your mic on, man. I'm gonna I'm bring Tanae in Got like you. this. I, I I don't wanna I don't wanna steal too much of her shine right now because she's our she's our highlighted guest speaker this Sunday at 2 p.m. So I, yeah. I don't want to give up too much too much what you're doing, but we we gotta highlight you because you know you are a powerful sister. Um, the word uh, perseverance um, is, is what describes you, a person that just never gives up. And you committed, and um, I wanted you to be part of the first uh, hidden gems in the community because you mean so much to our community. Um, the dedication you have coming up to juvenile, working with the kids, and the different organizations you are a part of, um, your story is powerful. And um, I remember when I first met you to where you are now, and I'm just so proud of you. And I'm like, keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm gonna stop there because this Sunday is gonna be your day. You're gonna have all the time to tell your whole story. And um, I, I, I really believe your story is going to impact a lot of women, a lot of men in our community. And I think your story, I keep telling you that it's a lot of things that's going to come a book, a lot of things that, that, that God is preparing you for. And um, I watch you where you could barely speak till you started speaking and now right. you're getting there. So, <laughs> so I, I'm just going to stop there. And um, cause Sunday is going to be very important and we hope everybody could tune in this Sunday at 2 PM because her story is powerful. We have a couple other guests, but her story is powerful. And I think your message um, and, and what you've been through is definitely going to change the mind of our young women and the women in our community uh, when it comes to dealing with people and relationships and life. So I just want to bring you on today and um, to say you wanted to hidden gems in our community. Well, thank you. Okay, what do I... You know how I get when I got to talk. I know, I know you shy, but <laughs> like, I don't know. we want to know about the stuff that you're involved in and in, in, in the community service and stuff that you're doing. Okay, so of course, you know, I go up to Juvenile Hall in San Francisco with Omega and mentor the kids. And um, that like, that feeds my soul, honestly. that That's like the highlight of my week every week, you know? Mm. but um can i say what happened to me john without going into um detail sure go ahead so i just don't want to steal it off for sunday but go ahead but i can just say <laughs> what like not go into detail but say i can yeah, say go a ahead. Little, you, little yeah, yeah go ahead go ahead give them a little bit just give them something that they want to turn in and listen to it on, on sunday go ahead go ahead okay so um basically i'm gonna start here i was born in the bay area i moved to texas when i was in middle school came back to the Bay Area when I graduated high school. And about a year and a half later, I got shot and it left me paralyzed in a wheelchair. So um, I think going through that, it just gave me like a new appreciation for like life. And, you know, I remember in the beginning, like not knowing, like, what am I gonna do? What is my future? Like, I don't know why I'm here. And um, now like through that, I've learned that like helping people that's what I'm here for, you know? So um, it started with me. Um, I went to Santa Clara University a few years ago and attended a six month business entrepreneurship program. And basically I came up with this idea to like help people in wheelchairs and stuff, get their shoes on. And I worked with somebody to get a prototype done. I entered the program, did all of that. You know, I felt like that's something that can help like a lot of people that people need. And um, 
So after that, I started attending CYO, which is Community Youth Outreach in Oakland. And I was trying to kind of get the feel of like public speaking and all that, you know. And um, one day I had a friend call me and tell me that he was going up to San Francisco Juvenile Hall to talk to the kids. And he asked me if I wanted to come watch. And I was like, yeah. So I went and um you know it was amazing a couple months later basically I reached out to Uncle Damien and I was like hey I want to start coming up to the juvenile hall and talking to the kids you know so um I started doing that and now I'm you know part of Omega us for us you know I just try to help be I just try to be a part of whatever I can for like the youth or the community of course I can't I don't participate in as much as I want to just because my situation, you know, everything is not really convenient or right for me, you know? So, um, but yeah, that's my thing. Like, I just, I, I'm really still trying to figure out like exactly what to do. But a couple of years ago, I started to go to school for psychology and, um, you know, um, I don't know. I just, I just want to help people. That's what I like. You know, John, like when I come up to the juvenile hall, I'm feeding people. Oh, uh, I'm bringing brownies and oxtails and, right. you know, yeah, she I do just, a lot. Uh, no, that's why I wanted to, to highlight you because, you know, given the situation, you've been in a wheelchair and, and de dealing with being paralyzed, um, just the love and the commitment you have to give back to be, you yeah. know, at a disadvantage. And I just wanted people to know that, you know, it's no excuse. That was the reason why I wanted you to bring on here because a lot of times people sit on their couch, they don't want to do nothing for the community. Um, we have all these excuses and to see your love and your passion for the youth and the people in the community and to do them under your circumstances is tremendous. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be acknowledged and I wanted to highlight you and I kept letting Rico know about you. You know, this Sunday is it, so important. And um, like Tashel said, language and, and communication is very important. and um, you know, this Sunday's conversation, we're talking about violence in the community, domestic violence, gun violence, sexual violence. And I just think, you know, whatever God leads you to do, he's going to lead you. But I want you to know that as a community, we support you, we love you, and we, we, we love the work and the commitment that you have for the people, the homeless people you go out and feed, the, the kids you reach, the young ladies inside the jail that you mentor, the young men that you mentor, they're very important. So we had to highlight you and get you on here today. And um, I just want to say thank you. And, and, and the world and the community needs to know who you are because you're a person that's giving back, especially in your circumstances. And we want to get behind you and support any adventures or anything that you have going on. And that's why we put you up here so the community can get behind you and support you. I love y'all. You also are part of both sides of the conversation. You can't forget that. Uh, I heard yeah, you say, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I heard you say, I, everybody, don't forget us. No, I'm just joking. It's like, it's <laughs> You know when you just had a birthday and you keep saying you was the uh, a year younger. I forgot. No, I, was, right. you know, I forgot. No, right, right. But you seem very, very young, um, very beautiful, um, princess, queen. Um, I just want to say, you know, you're you're doing amazing work, um, especially with the situation. Um, that drive. I mean, a lot of people don't have that drive. They don't have that willpower. They don't have what you possess and the inspiration that you give to people who aren't in the wheelchair and who are, that power is, is, is greater than anything me, John, can do. It, 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 it just speaks volumes to who you are as an individual to no matter what, say, you know what, I'm gonna give back. No matter what, I'm gonna support. No matter what, I'm gonna figure it out. And whatever we can do to continue to highlight you as a gem and, and continue to make sure your diamonds shine, we are 100% here for you. Got your back. You're also someone John talked about a thousand times in our conversation. Really? Me and him talk, me and him <laughs> talk like almost like eight times a day. And your name come up every single day. And Aww. you know how are we gonna bring her in? How are we gonna make sure that we can highlight her story so that we can get young people to better understand uh, how when things happen, what can be the result? And then what do you do if the result isn't? Uh, fatality and that you do still have an opportunity to create a message to get young people to stop doing what they're doing or you know to take a look at life in a different way so he talks about you all the time I, I don't know the full story because he don't want to 
he don't want me to uh uh you don't want want a spoiler to... alert <laughs> right 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 he want me to hear on sunday so i'm like you know i can't wait but i'm gonna have to be patient to, to to hear the story but i know that it's an amazing story just by knowing that you know you're doing the work you know what i mean like you're going up to juvenile you're you're working with omega um that's just amazing work within itself so i used to go up there a while back and then i kind of fell off because i i've been doing like i could I'm I'm like I'm like the uh the 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 what's that called the 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 genius type person like I want to create a thousand things and then move on that uh -oh. stuff yeah yeah so I, <laughs> you know but I need so I need beautiful women to help uh, help us create it but me and John we like we can create a thousand things we talk about a million ideas every day all day and we just need women like you Jada and all the other women to help materialize it. It ain't even about us and us being in control. It's just like, look, these are things that can work in our community. Hunt, go ahead, mm -hmm. run with that. That's some amazing stuff to, to, to do. So continue yeah. the amazing work. We got your back, sister. Anything you need from us, we're here for you. And, and let me tell you, and, and, and Rico, when you say that, she go fight you, right? You know, all the brothers up there, me, Uncle Damon, she come up, you know, she drive her car by herself. She do everything. So we like, let it, let us help you. She's like, no, I got it. Don't touch me. So, so, you know, it's like, she is not only, no, she is not only. I don't say it like that. She's she not only beating the odds. You know what I mean? She want people to know that even with a disability that she still can do it, man. And that, that's just the power of this sister, man. She got, she got stone, man. Like I said, strong lady. And uh, Sunday, we looking forward to the story, but we got to let Jada, I know Jada got something she want to ask you. Which, which I know, no, Jada? I don't have anything that I could ask because I guess I have to wait until Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wait until Sunday to learn a lot more, but but I am looking forward to it and just hearing from just, just what you shared now, it, it definitely is inspiring and it really does take that, that, that drive and passion um, to just keep pushing. And I can't wait until Sunday because I was hoping to hear more now, but um, I'll I'm wait. Happy that we gotta wait until Sunday because I'm nervous. It's all right. Yeah. We're gonna we go walk you through it. Uh, you know, she a little shy, but yeah. she's working into her motivational speaker mode. And um, it's always baby steps to get there. And we always encourage her. And it's okay to take mm -hmm. your time and it's okay to make mistakes. But um, yeah, your story is powerful. And I'm telling you, the feedback and the response is gonna be amazing. It's a very touching story. And um every time I hear, you know, I I, I get teary-eyed emotional because you know, mm -hmm. you represent a black woman. I have a daughter and a child, and just knowing um, you know, the things that you've been through, it, it just it always touched me. So I just want to thank you again. I'm looking forward. Look, look, don't start crying on yeah, me. I'm not crying. <laughs> so Sunday. Um, we just want to thank you for being one of our hidden gems. And, um, you know, Sunday at 2 p.m., we're looking forward. I know the people out there now, they're ready to hear the story of what happened and um, just your perspective on, like, how it affected you, changed your life. And um, just mm -hmm. the young women out there hearing that story is going to really make them think. So I just want to thank you again today. And thank you for coming on. And thank you, you can leave in the chat. You can leave in the chat box if people want to get a hold of you or whatever, support you. Um, put it in the chat box or you could I, I'll, I'll send you information out if somebody want to help you out in any kind of way okay thank you thank, thank you. you all right thank you see thank you sunday you sis. <laughs> okay all right turn your mic on yeah hey, yeah 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 that was big man so, so so we got some amazing gems in the community man so you know it's no excuse for why we can't get together and, and really create real equitable change for our community and making sure that we're really creating something that can really be uh, real big for black communities across the country. I know I like to think um, small, but I'm more of a visionary. So I like to think everything far as um, we, we think about the small thing, but what is the longer vision? What is the future result? Um, and I know that's how John is. I know that's how Jada is. That's why we are such a dynamic team. Um, Everybody that we brought up today is doing amazing work. I can't wait. I can't wait till next week. Um, hitting gems in the black community. We 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 should do a men's version, John. We should probably do that probably Thursday if we can. Oh no, I'll be out of town. Damn. You gonna be out of town. You'll be out of town. Oh, you and Jada. <laughs> so you and Jada do the black gems uh, of the community. Uh, then when or we could we could we could or we could hold it off. Um, 
But before we go, Rico, we, we want to give people some updates. What's going on about the motivation? You can talk about it. Or I can talk about it. Our data camp. We want to get that information about what happened with the docs and all of that so that people understand. If you want to do it, our data mm -hmm. do it. Go ahead, Jada. Yeah, so um, for anyone still interested in signing up for the mentoring program, um, I have recently shared a link a few hours ago, and uh, some things that we heard was that some people couldn't fill out the form, even some of the questions, like you couldn't select the, the, um, the response that you wanted to. So we did go back and update it. Um, hopefully it works now. Um, it may also be with the more and more that we share the link, the that's what I've heard is that it sometimes just doesn't work. Um, but it is, uh, it should be at the top of our page. I'm going to try to figure out if there's a way to pin it there. But um, yeah, please fill it out. Even if you can't fill it out, email us. We'll try to get you the link again. Can you give them the email address to reach out? Yeah. So, so it's both sides of the conversation at gmail.com. So we're looking for it. We, go ahead, Rico. Oh, yeah, if you need some young folks uh, between the ages of 6 to 30 that need mentorship, that need some type of support, we launched the program yesterday. Um, sign them up. We are volunteers. Just want to give back to our community, want to support young people um, in the best way that we possibly can. We are good brothers. Everybody that are mentors, they're heavily vetted to make sure that they're amazing mentors. They, they have a perfect message. So that way that the young people that we are handing off to our mentors is have a clear message of creating equity for our young people, creating um, um, perfect knowledge or information is being tra uh, transferred in the, in the best way possible. So if you need a young or if your young person needs to be mentored or wants some type of support, um, we have mentors on deck that can definitely support them. We do parenting, uh, parent um, stu parent mentee um, um, conferencing where we have a, where we have uh, conversations with the parent and the mentee where we're, we're staying focused trying to make sure that the household um, is amazing and, and whatever we hearing that we can we all can work together that's the overall goal is working together and making sure we have one-on-one -on -one sessions with the young people to make sure that we can build community with them um, and they can better trust us so if you need somebody, if somebody needs to be mentored, please let us know. Right. And just to give everybody a quick background, um, due to the COVID, we know people are in the house. One thing that me and Rico and Jada, we thought about uh, doing this virtual mentoring. Uh, one thing about being a virtual uh, mentor and, and doing it through this platform, we're able to reach all our community. Even though me, Rico, and uh, Jada from the San Francisco Bay Area, um, anyone can sign up for this. The good part about this being virtual is if you in Los Angeles, if you are in another state, or if you're in another part of the region, you could also be involved, right? Our goal of this program is to not only free mentor, but make sure that any single parents or any parents out there that's struggling and need help to work with their kids, that we are available and you can reach us through uh, a digital uh, platform. So that's why this thing is gonna be uh, such a resourceful we don't want any we don't want any parents to feel like i don't know where the nearest mentor is we in covid no one could talk to my kid so we're trying to use this technology to also mentor our youth so you don't have to be in san francisco you don't have to be in the bay area if you want to sign up we're going to be doing this through zoom and uh, we're going to have one-on-ones we'll get your phone number wherever you at and mentor your kid so we also want to just let people know this is not a a certain graphical location that we're doing this. This is virtual, so anybody could join. And uh, we want to help as many parents as we can and see how far we can take this thing. This is a new uh, thing. We are one of the first mentoring groups out here that's doing this virtual. There's no one doing it. We search, we look, there's nobody doing it. So this will be a good test for us to um, find out how is, it, how is it going to go, how it's going to work, get our feedback, and uh, continue to push through. Also, on both sides of the uh, conversation, if you didn't hear earlier when Lynn was talking, upcoming, we're gonna have financial literacy classes. We're gonna be bringing people in here to talk about debt free. We're gonna have people talking about credit repair. We're gonna have people talking about investment. Um, we have a collective body of people who are um, intrigued, ready to go. We're setting up dates. I'm gonna be teaching a debt free class. We're gonna have a whole week um, and we're gonna continue to go over this because the biggest thing that we need to do, like Lynn said, is we gotta financially um, 
sustain our people through literacy and understanding money and how it work and how to invest and uh, make sure that everything that we're learning so that we can excel, support each other in the community, um, that's coming up. And then also we're gonna be doing um, at some point, black business acknowledgement. Uh, one of the problems that we keep getting feedback is a lot of people say they don't know where the black businesses are. So we're gonna be highlighting business owners of the black community and the brown community, letting people know where you guys are at. Um, so that if someone's traveling to your city or your state, they can stop in, whether you're here in the Bay Area or you're out of the state. Uh, we wanna just connect people and we're gonna use this platform to get all of our businesses um, out there so people can get out there and support you because there's a lot of people that want to support their black dollars and brown dollars but the community people of color and um, we want to get your information so we're going to be setting up some dates coming up in the future so if you have a business a nonprofit, an LLC whatever you're doing in the, in the community and uh, you want our people to get behind you and support you we're going to be using this platform we're going to be setting up a day to highlight and introduce other people in the community to your business So that's this week's version of both sides of the conversation, hitting gems in the black community. Thank you for watching. I'm Rico. I'm John Henry. Jada. And y'all have an amazing night. Thank you so much. Thank you.